I signed my first contract when I was six years old. Every Sunday after church, my parents would give me an allowance. It was 20 pesos, or the equivalent of around $1 today. And every time I got my allowance, I would run to the nearest store or arcade and spend every cent. Until one day, I found something that was more expensive than the 20 pesos I received. It was a remote control car, and it was calling my name. I didn't want to wait to buy it. I didn't have the patience to save enough money to buy it myself, so I did the most sensible thing I could think of. I went to my parents and asked them to buy it for me. <laughs> well, you see, my parents had a really interesting way of teaching me things by adding little activities into my everyday life. And at the time, they didn't feel like more than a game, but I was learning some very valuable lessons. On this day, my parents decided that it was the perfect opportunity to teach me about loans and credit. And this is how they did that. They sat me down and said, we will give you the money, but before we can do that, here's what you need to do. Take this piece of paper, write down how much money you need, why you need the money, and that you will pay us back. When you're done, you're gonna bring it back so that we can all sign it, and this will be your contract. As we were signing that piece of paper, they were explaining how over the next few months, instead of receiving 20 pesos, I was gonna get 15 in my allowance. This was my first lesson in financial literacy. Since then, I have realized that while I was fortunate enough to have seen these lessons at a very young age, not everyone gets those same opportunities. Fast forward 20 years, and I now work in making sure that I expose young people to what it means to be a member of a community, a business owner, and a family provider. Every single year, I see around 15,000 different young people from across the state. Our staff take them through two different programs where they get to apply and learn about micro and macroeconomic concepts. They do it in a way where they get to interact in an experiential programming in a space where the students get to be an adult for a day. Through those programs, I get to see firsthand the different opportunities and exposure that they all get around one common thing, financial literacy. To give you an example of how different these worlds look to them, when we teach students about paying bills, we start by asking one simple question. What do people get in the mail? Now, if you're curious to know how wild a kid's imagination is, or how different their perspectives about life is, you should sit around for when that question is answered. They'll say things like, what's a bill? Some say packages, of course. Others say checks. Sometimes, however, the answer is much more telling in how different these two worlds really are. One time we had a student say, people get foreclosure notices on their mail. Society cares a lot, a lot about one thing today, that is sending their kids to school to learn about math, science, social studies, and some humanities. What about real life stuff, though? Like how a small piece of our heart breaks every time we have to pay taxes. <laughs> or how it is our responsibility to vote and elect officials who can represent us how we have to care for each other in the spaces that we live in, and how difficult it actually is to make everyday decisions. In this time and age, it is important to expose our youth to what it really means to work, to have a job. Now, I'm not saying send your kids to, to work. That's not, what I'm, that's not what I'm saying here. But I do believe that when we start to introduce these concepts to them at an early age, it all becomes to feel very natural. In one of our programs, we take students, a group of students that's five to eight, and they get to learn what it feels like to run a business. So they'll apply for a business loan, they will enter employees in for payroll, they'll create a business plan, a marketing plan, and it, they also sell products, try to make a profit. Now, through these programs, they get to see firsthand what we see 
when we wake up every single morning. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to remember everything that they saw there, but they will remember some of the activities that led to their business being successful, and they do it in the most natural way. I want you to think about this. When you wake up in the morning, you go to work, you make some money, you come back home, and you're hopefully living the life you wished for. You spend time with your family, you save money to go on trips, vacations, You go watch a movie with a loved one, and you pay bills. What if you had zero idea of how any of that happened right now? According to the S&P Global Financial Literacy Survey, the rate of global financial literacy for people ages 15 through 35 is around 30%. And it comes as no surprise that wealthy individuals understand money issues better than lower income individuals. And with an increasing wealth gap in our society, we have a lot of work to do. A lot of our students, a lot of the students that come through our space, they feel lost because they haven't had anyone explain to them that a certain job leads to a certain income and that then that income leads to a certain lifestyle. After seeing thousands of students interact in one space, I have come to one conclusion about life. It is not scary when you're faced with a new challenge. It is only scary when you do not understand how to navigate it. Our students need a little more help. They need to understand how to connect the dots you can all play a very important role in making sure that these young people understand what their future lives can look like. Instead of telling your kids to turn off the lights, show them a bill for electricity. Show them what it actually costs. Point out all of the community services around them. That way, They don't have that small heart attack every time they see taxes come off of their paychecks. Each of us can be a catalyst for change. All we have to do is share something good or perhaps something difficult that we have faced in our lives. My job is not to teach financial literacy to young people. My job is to inspire all of the different groups that I come across. You can do the exact same thing. Do not be afraid to share.